I've been using LibreWool for God knows what amount of time and today I wanted to sort of try Firefox and make it usable and stuff like that so this is a really cool build that I've got here of Firefox so this one it's by default very bloated and I guess very less privacy respecting but basically I used uh, Arc and Fox to do some cool stuff with it and I, I guess explain all of that so first of all Firefox is still a great browser there's a sort of, I guess, copy pasta going on where people are switching from Firefox to uh, insert any other browser here, like, I don't know, Brave or whatever. Which uh, Brave has good search engine, but the browser, I don't really like it. And a lot of people don't actually dig into how you can still make Firefox good. So, for those who don't know, Mozilla Firefox is basically Google Chrome now. But they do give you the opportunity to make it very privacy respecting and basically turn it into the old Firefox. And that's sort of what I have here. So Mozilla Firefox, right? By default, it has uh, a lot of stuff. And you can get rid of most of that by basically grabbing in uh, Arc and Fox. I'll actually just show you. So unnecessarily open a new tab. But we're going to go to GitHub, Arc and Fox, and uh, User.js. And <clears throat> that should be it. So this is pretty nice. User.js, for those who don't know, there is this thing called uh, about config, and what it is is that it's basically just this, uh, I guess, uh, s this list of all of the options for Firefox, right? So it's sort of like, well, it's just a config, so you can s turn on or turn off the options here, and you can sort of configure this in a JavaScript file. So you get this, you have this file in your uh, user directory if you go to dot mozilla and then you have uh, firefox and then you have this uh, default default user sometimes it's default release but you want to go there and you want to go to user.js so that is file well, probably uh, not exist out of the box but all you have to do is go here to work and fox and read the wiki because that explains it all how to install it and stuff but basically, we're gonna uh, use Arc and Fox, and Arc and Fox, the way it works, it has this user.js that, you know, sets all of the options, makes it uh, very privacy respecting, very minimal, so it gets rid of the start page. I really like that. And then you can also have like uh, user overrides.js. So this is my attempt to disable a Firefox view. Does not seem to be working, so that might just be a new Firefox version issue. But yeah, Arc and Fox, it's really nice. It just sets a lot of options. And you can turn off some of the options that you don't want in, I guess, your preferences. So if you go to like about and then preferences, you go to uh, data, I guess it's called uh, cookies and site data. Just uh, turn this off. So delete cookies and site data when Firefox is closed. Just turn that option off and you'll be fine to go. So you're uh, website logins and stuff they will not be deleted when you exit that's pretty nice and so Arc and Fox it has this nice little default for you know a hardened version of Firefox and that's it for the user.js and scary stuff like that but now it's just extensions so these are all of the extensions I use I'll just go here and manage your extensions um, I'll go through them one by one dark creator is just dark creator it basically makes websites uh, dark so if I were to go to like my website um, I can go ahead and open dark reader and I can say on and you can see that it sort of tries its best to make stuff dark and while you know my website doesn't look good with dark reader it is very useful on uh, certain sites and decentralized it just uh, protects you from this tracking stuff that's basically what it is I still don't care about cookies this basically disables sort of those cookie pop-ups, right? So it's pretty self-explanatory. I still don't care about cookies. Library Direct just uh, redirects stuff. So if you actually go to uh, Library Direct, I don't know why it was, why well, it's not loading up, but here you can do a lot of cool stuff. You can go to like services and do like, let's say I don't want to use Twitter, so I want to replace that for like, Twitter, which is an open source friend and or let's say I want to replace YouTube with individuals, which is also an open source front end. I can do that. Um, search by image is just for reverse image searching. So if I uh, click on some image and then I right click and 
it will have this search by image option. So that's really nice for reverse image searching, right? That's basically finding uh, similar images to whatever image you want. Stylus just helps you style your websites. So for example, if I were to go to like youtube.com, uh, and this is going to take a while to load up. I don't know why. Uh, websites, modern websites, they're kind of loaded. And I'll talk about why my YouTube looks like this later on. But I can open Stylish and I can uh, find styles or write my own. So let's say I want like a, a Luffy progress bar, then I can get that. Or the uh, old YouTube layout, then I can get that. This actually looks pretty nice. I'll keep that. That is what Stylus is. You block origin. You all know it. I'm not going to explain it. Unhook, that's why my YouTube looks like what my YouTube looks like. It's basically got uh, no homepage, no shorts or anything like that. Very simple. And uh, VimMC, that's just Vim key bindings. So if I were to open like, well, what's a really long site? Uh, probably Dark and Fox user.js. So you can see that I can scroll down with a J or K. That is really nice. And it also has many other key bindings like, you know, I can say uh, GI for the search bar and stuff like that. Uh, it's got massive documentation, so you can just use that. And that's pretty much it for uh, Firefox. So I didn't know that closing the last tab would close out the browser. I thought it was just going to open a new tab. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the video.